Deprivation. God, Jesus, God, deprivation. The word comes up all the time. If you're a wellness professional, especially if you ever engage people in a conversation about food, the word, you can't, you can't, you can't open your eyes without seeing the word deprivation. So let's talk about that for a second. Um, so last week, interesting story, at least I think it is, last week I attended the first ever international food addiction conference. First ever international food addiction conference. How that could only just now be happening in 2014 bends my brain six ways to Sunday, but it's the truth. So, that, and, and as luck would have it, and who believes in luck, really, the universe plopped it an hour and 45 minutes away from my house. At that meeting, they discussed the three different types of eaters, right? And there are three different types of eaters, and these three different types of eaters need completely different solutions if they're having a problem with eating. If someone is overweight and they are happy and they are healthy and they are peaceful and quiet and feel good about it, it is none of our business and let's just back off. But if someone is obese and is uncomfortable and is unhappy and the brain is not quiet and there's an unhealthy relationship there that needs mending, then how is that solved, right? So there are three eaters and therefore three solutions. The first is the normal eaters. Now, there is no such thing as normal. Let's call them the blessed, right? These are the people who, and you've probably heard tell of one of them, is probably your great uncle, because for some reason, it, it's usually the great uncle. It's this person who is overweight, has an unhealthy relationship with food, goes to the doctor, gets a, a, a nourishing and portion controlled meal plan that they then adopt, so then they lose weight and then they keep it off. Ah, whether or not that happens is, is just, it's an informational problem. They were eating because it was in front of them and then someone told them to stop doing that and so they changed how they ate, they lost the weight and they kept it off, done. So those are the blessed, those are the normal eaters and those are the people for whom diets are an effective tool. Beyond diet, have you guys heard about this thing? I wrote a blog post about it a few weeks ago. It's like the five things to eliminate and then you'll magically lose weight and you'll keep it off forever and everything will be great and there'll be unicorns and stardust and all kinds of stuff. Um, yes, for like 0.5 of a percent of people and those are the blessed, the normal eaters for whom it's just an information problem. That's not me, right? And that's probably not you. And then the next step up is emotional eaters. And emotional eaters are people who have, for whatever reason, at whatever point in their development, started to use food and eating as a coping strategy for emotions, positive or negative, or none. Um, you know, there are some people who use food as a coping mechanism for boredom, which would be neutrality, which would be nothing. So these people often have a uh, trauma history and often have uh, co-occurring conditions like anxiety, depression, at the conference. This is all stuff that I learned at the conference, all stuff that I've known forever, but that I learned at the conference. So these people, the emotional eaters, go to therapy, figure out alternative coping strategies for stress or boredom or happiness or whatever, alternatives to food and eating, and that's what they do when they get sad or stressed or bored or whatever. They, and they address old trauma and they, they resolve it, they work it out in therapy, and then they adopt the same sort of nutritional program that a blessed eater would adopt, so a nourishing and portion controlled diet, and they lose the weight and they keep it off forever, right? So most of us labored, have labored for many, many years under the assumption that that's what we are. But the truth of the matter is, for me, and perhaps for you, I tried that. Boy, howdy. S uh. <laughs> how many different ways, how many different professionals, how many different therapists, how many years, how many resources, how much craziness, how many coping mechanisms, how many exercises in whatever, and this is how I'm going to do it differently, and this, that, and the other. and and then trying in that 
therapized shrunken state to adopt one of those nourishing portion controlled eating programs and it just failed and failed and failed and failed and what made it fail was that these programs so often involved controlled portions of foods that actually trigger an addictive response in me right which brings us to the third group which would be food addicts which has a really bad rep but I'm beginning to believe more and more and more that actually we're a different kind of blessed because there's incredible clarity around how that problem is solved. With the emotional eaters, you know, how much therapy is enough? When do you feel like you've resolved old trauma? There's too many variables, there's too much, there's too much gray area. When we've crossed the line into addiction, it's clear that there are certain things that are triggering and those things are to be avoided. And once we avoid them, we experience tremendous freedom. Deprivation, I, so I have people reporting to me that they've, based on the suggestions that I've given them in the course, they have begun to limit their portions of this, that, or the other thing that they've decided they don't have a healthy relationship to. But in limiting them, they are creating deprivation. They are com creating the experience of deprivation. So last night was Halloween, right? I had several choices of how I could spend that evening. I could do something that wasn't focused on candy and therefore not think about candy, which would be abstinence. Or I could portion myself out a portion of a Kit Kat and eat it and then try to walk away and not think about it anymore. In what situation am I experiencing the feeling of deprivation? Right? Is it when I eat less than I would like to by a, a dump truck's worth <laughs> of volume? Or when I make it a non-issue by not even having it be a part of the landscape of my life? There is no room for deprivation when I am apart from it completely and have drawn a firm and loving boundary between me and a thing that I have accepted, I cannot eat in moderation and be okay with, right? So if you are like me, and I know that not all of you are, I recognize that actually many of you are emo emotional eaters. And, and for you, it is worth, so you guys have another set of problems. Let's, let's, let me try to wrap this one up first. So if you are like me and you have crossed the line into an addictive pattern with certain things, freedom from a sense of deprivation, from a sense of loss, from a sense of, from all kinds of negative things that keep us going back is abstinence, period. And if you still feel drawn, especially physically, to those foods, probably you are not abstinent. And probably the food that you are trying to abstain from is getting in through some sort of, you know, crack, chink in the fence, something. And uh, it might be worth your while to talk to a doctor or a registered dietitian about how that might be happening so that you can be fully abstinent from the thing that is making you crazy and creating these cravings. Now, for those of you who are emotional eaters, if you have not crossed that line, right, if actually having a little sits on your mind just fine, and yet you feel like you can't do that consistently, another problem that I'm realizing that many of the people who are attracted to my message have is that they don't want to spend any money on themselves. If going to a really good shrink or seeing a really good psychiatrist or whatever costs money, that is prohibitive to you. We, we're not, none of us is made of money, and I'm not telling you to just throw money at the problem, but I am imploring you, if you have the resources, and that would be a reasonable allocation of them, I strongly recommend to you that you do some intense work, because the longer you wait, the more deeply embedded you are in the habits that you want to break out of.